So I'm up late with my pal Gizzy. He's kind of piled up on some pillows on the couch. Oh man, you know how to get comfortable, don't you, buddy? So, so we're in the Black Hills, and uh, this is a fantastic place to see wildlife from the roads. And we happened upon a couple of mountain goats the other day. And I'll let you see the video. And there was a car in front of us. This is on a two-lane, a two-way uh, little road, asphalt road. And, you know, it's pretty typical that, you know, people kind of line up, look at the wildlife. Oh, there goes the furnace. It is pretty cold outside. But people line up and look at the wildlife. And you just kind of gradually move on and, and let the people behind you come see them, you know. Uh, so the car in front of me had stopped. And uh, so I pulled up behind it and, and was doing some filming. And suddenly, here comes this car, drives around both of us, stops in front of both of us, and takes their pictures. Got close enough to the mountain goats that they actually moved up the hill away from these people. <laughs> anyway, Terry thought it was pretty rude. Um, I wasn't particularly happy with the whole thing either. Uh, but, you know, on the other hand, I'm, I'm blocking their way. The car in front of me is blocking my way. Um, but I think most people, we just kind of mosey on and let the people behind us come. So I don't know. You can see the video and decide for yourself. <laughs> oh my God, look how they eat on the side of the thing. Oh wow, Gizzy wants to see him. Oh my God, that's so cool. See, there's your friends. He sees them, George. He totally sees them. Oh, oh, thanks. Jeez. Hey, thanks for going up, mountain goats. That is so rude of these people. No kidding. God, get out of the way. Arkansas. Oh, they're so cute, George. Hi, honey. Hi. The other thing is that uh, I also got a new device, and I've seen these for a long time, and lots of RV people have talked about them. And they make them f specifically for RVs as well, but that's not what I got. What it is is a cell phone booster, and we've, uh, um, this one's called the Sleep Drive. It's from WeBoost. Wilson people uh, but anyway the, the whole thing is that where we are in the Black Hills is very inexpensive because we're we're older than dirt okay and we now qualify for the $80 lifetime National Parks Pass <laughs> and that pass not only does it entitle you to entry into any national parks I didn't know this but it also discounts your camping fees by 50% so we're staying in a national forest campground that normally would cost twenty dollars a night and because of that card it's uh, cut in half to ten dollars a night so the card basically has more than paid for itself the first time we've we've used it we've, we've been to the badlands a couple times with it and now uh, we got half off on uh, what would have been a $280 camping bill is uh, for 14 days and they're actually letting us stay a couple days extra because the campground's going to close right at the end of our stay so we're going to actually extend it a couple of days uh, but anyway so you know there are some advantages to getting old but this cell phone booster device is uh, I, I have to say that I'm really happy with the performance of this thing. So what we were experiencing was, and, and it's, the reason that I never bought one before is that it's very rare, even in some of the most remote areas, I mean, either we have a cell signal or we don't, for the most part. 
it's fairly rare that we run into places where we have a weak signal uh, because we, I have both Verizon and AT&T and usually between the two of them uh, one or the other of them will have a decent uh, signal and uh, Verizon probably has slightly better coverage uh, depending on what area of the country you're in but a AT&T's unlimited plan that we're on is much better they don't throttle us and so uh, it, it's a better, it works better for us in the long run. But anyway, so at this campground, at night, we would tend to have a pretty decent cell, cell service. It was always only one bar, but during the daytime when the sun was out, uh, it seems to impact the signal strength somehow. So uh, I decided to go to Rapid City and see about getting a booster, and I, I did find one at uh, Best Buy. And the recommended one for an RV is like 800 bucks, and it requires a good-sized outside antenna to be mounted. And I, you know, I just I wasn't going to use it that often. You know, we just—it's not that often that we need a cell signal boost. So I got the one for that's actually intended for use as a car, as a car. Intended <laughs> for yeah, go drive this thing around. It's intended for use in the car. And uh, so I hooked it up, and I am thoroughly impressed. It made the signal rock solid, uh, got us, it doubled the number of bars, probably tripled them actually most of the time. So it went from one bar to three bars, and the bandwidth and throughput and everything else improved dramatically. So I'm actually going to upload this video when I get done with it. So count me as one of the people that's, that's pretty happy. And all, all this device is is, a, is an external antenna, an amplifier, and then a cradle to put your phone in, or in my case, a hotspot in. And because I set our uh, internet in the house up to be routed all through my Mac computer, uh, we only need one device you know, amplified anyway. So having an antenna inside the house, that, uh, like the big version, that broadcasts, you know, amplifies and broadcasts a cell signal throughout your house, that's unnecessary for us. We don't need that. Uh, so just a place to put my hotspot in the cradle and bam, worked just like that. A couple hundred bucks. So it was $600 less and I'm sure you get better performance from the big full system. But then you've got this pole mounted on your RV and an antenna mounted and you probably have to point the antenna whenever you stop and blah blah blah. I'm happy with this thing that uh, that worked out for us and so uh, I'll recommend it. The Drive Sleek worked great. Anyway, thanks for watching.